Thank you for joining us on Daily Impact. Today, we start a two-part series on purity, very important topic to God and also in our lives. So as you join us, please open your Bible, open your mind, and let's see what God has to say. Thank you for joining us again, friends, here on Daily Impact. And a uh, great time. In a moment, we're going to get to maybe the most important thing that we have said mm -hmm. on Daily Impact, according to the Bible. But uh, before we do... Name that tune. Name that go. tune. Round two. Here we go. They're Who won the first time? Who won the first time? Did you win it? I don't... Uh, you know what? I think I did with uh, some cartoon. The Incredibles. No, no you I, That was me. I you think you yeah, <laughs> yeah, The Incredibles. Okay. That's right. Here, yeah. Hey, and those of you watching, please keep an eye on Brother Judah's eyes and make sure he's not looking, I challenge at, make you. Sure he's not looking yeah. at the computer. I will not look at the computer. I can't see anything. Here we go. See if you can beat him. <clears throat> we'll hear five, six seconds of the song. First one is to shout it out. Here we go. First one in three, two. Pink Panther. <laughs> You know, I seem to jump out to a lead and, and lose these things, though. I need to... Mental toughness. I guess. Mental toughness. I need to win. <laughs> I hate the Pink Panther, by the way. I don't know that I've ever seen a Pink Panther show. Okay. Not an excuse, Mr. No, that's no excuse, Mr. I just know the commercial, the insulation commercial. Mm -hmm. Insulation. Pink Panther. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why he used that insulation commercial. All right. Here we go. Next one. One to zero. Starting in three, two. Avengers. Star Wars. Star Wars. Ah! <laughs> Darth Vader's walking off. The Imperial March. Star Wars. Did you beat that one, Jet? I was disappointed in Avengers, for sure. I had some physical therapy done <laughs> last night, and my brain is... Uh, I, I just need I just need one more out of the next three. Right. So what you're getting ready to see is the greatest <laughs> comeback <laughs> of all time. And name that tune history. That's right. Here we go. Start in three. Could happen. Two. Home Alone. No! Oh! 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 Man! That's a tricky one. That was good. Home Alone. The sweet, the sweet. You know, love, yeah, Jeff loves Home Alone. So let's do this. Let's do one more. Okay. And if I get it, we continue. Okay. Okay. We'll just do this on a case by case basis here. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. That's fair. Here we go. Next one in three, two, one. Incredible. Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. All right, we're done. <laughs> We are done. Wow. Well, okay. Hey, I finally get a win. Great to I be with you again. Yeah, we'll <laughs> did you win yesterday? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we had a video for our game. Oh, That's I don't true. Think we did either. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're in Ephesians yeah. 6. Ephesians 6. The whole armor of God. And uh, you might be able to stand in the evil day. Mm -hmm. Wrestle not against flesh and blood. You. We. Pivotal passage here. What do you see, John, yeah. in, in verse 13? We're, we're getting moving right along, going kind of verse by verse. Verse 13, one word just kind of stood out to me that we haven't really mentioned yet. If you have your Bibles open there, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, it says, Wherefore, take. And that word, take, just, just stood out to me because it's, it's not something that is given to us. This, this armor that we need, this battle that we're in, the tools that we need, they're not just handed handed down and given to us. They're available. Yeah. They're there. Yeah. But we, we have to we have to take them when we talk about the, the truth, when we talk about the salvation, when we talk about our mind, these 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 things, we need to take them, take them for ourselves. Take them for ourselves. Wherefore take. Yeah. I, I love that it. word take. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. The Bible goes on to talk in verse number uh, fourteen. Okay. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. And let's just stop right there and let's recognize the fact and let's just say it. We're talking purity. Mm -hmm. Having your loins girt about with truth. The, the first piece of armor 
that, that God gives us is for our purity. You know, protect your purity. And there's a lot of there's a lot of truth there. You know, one of the truths is this is this connects everything. Mm -hmm. Like this is important. This this matters. Your purity is related to every other piece of armor. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, uh, a weight training guy that I watch, and you guys know I talk about him in weight training. Uh, I mentioned him even, even in class, I think maybe in passing a time or two. Jeff Cavalier, Athlete X. I mean, huge fitness guru, but very, very intelligent, has trained many professional athletes from the Mets put on their run from um, the early 2000s there. He was their personal trainer, trained, I mean, guys from the WWE. I mean, these monster guys come in and ask this guy for his help. And one of his like staples, one of his foundations for weight training and being growing stronger as an athlete is your core is at the core of everything you do. And in every exercise, whether whether you're curling, whether you're squatting, whether you're in, in the middle of a bench press, he's always making sure their core is engaged. And I, I mean, big, doing core every single day. I mean, he, that's mm -hmm. his, his routine is he does core every single day because that that core, if you you can have big arms, and you can be you so, can so be, say that statement again. Yeah, your core, your core needs to be at the core of everything you do. Yeah. So when you relate that mm -hmm. to to scripture, mm -hmm. and I know where you were going there. You can have yeah. big arms, you can have a big back, shoulders, whatever. But if the core is weak, yeah. you're weak. Mm -hmm. When you relate that to scripture, okay, hey, you can be saved. You have the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. You can be an unbelievable soul winner, feet child, preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, all the Bible knowledge in the world, you know, the sword of the spirit, you, you can be able to wield it, you know, in some cases be a great preacher. Uh, but if your purity is messed up, the core is at the core of everything. And, and at the core of our Christian lives, at the core of our fight with the devil is our purity. Mm -hmm. and, and God says to protect it, he says in verse 14, the way to protect your purity is with the truth. The truth of the word of God. To sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 7, 7 17. John 17, 7. Thy word is truth. And so there's some Bible truth that we need to, number one, recognize. Number two, believe. Number three, submit to, yield to, that will protect our purity. You know. And uh, and let's give them, let's give them for a few minutes here. Let's give them some some Bible truths that will protect their purity. Yeah. You know, I think while I'm listening to John uh, talk and give that illustration, I think of James chapter 3, which says wisdom from above is first pure. First pure. You know, we like to do our lists, whether it's top five basketball players, top five warriors, and you can all debate who's right and who's wrong, but when it comes to what's first, according to wisdom that's from above, you can't argue. You can't argue that God, maybe he just put that list in there alphabetically, okay? Because But he says it's yeah, first. There's priority pure. given. Absolutely. Priority given. Absolutely. And I think one of the truths that God wants us to know, wants Christian young people to know, wants, wants adults and Christians to know in general, that is that your purity matters. It matters. It's important to God. And I, I guess I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a verse or point out a verse to you here in just a moment. But before I get there, does does what God, what matters to God, does it matter to you? Mm. Because sometimes when you deal with Christian young people, you, okay, I, I want to do this, and since I want to do this, I'm just going to figure out a way to justify it, and I'll figure out a way to dismiss whatever, whatever this verse says or that verse says to justify what I want to do. And so before I, I, I ever even mention the verse I'm going to go to, does what matters to God, does that matter to you? If it does, can you look logically at what the Bible says about purity? That there's three guys that care about you, and we're not trying to meddle in your business. We're trying to show you what God says, because we want you to, be, to, to have a blessed life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 starts by saying, in, in verse number 3, For this is the will of God. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say whatever comes next is probably the will of God. Yeah. I mean, it states it so perfectly. You know, um, across the page it says, "In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. Does that offend anybody that it's the will of God for you to be thankful? There are five places in Scripture where the Bible says, this is the will of God. It spells it out. That, that's right. That's yeah. one of them. You ought to be thankful. Somehow that doesn't rub any Christian young person the wrong way. But right across the page, 
from that in my Bible is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye abstain from fornication. That word sanctification, you know what it means. That means clean and set apart mm -hmm. for a purpose. And God wants you to be clean and set apart for a purpose. Well, what does that mean? Well, it has something to do with fornication, okay? And it says that you abstain from fornication. You can try to dismiss it because of what our society says or because the sheer number or volume of people that say otherwise, but your purity matters to God. That is, that is a big deal. You know, oh, we didn't mention this beforehand, but I remember talking to one of my classmates I graduated with him, and now this was, this was probably 15 years ago, he was considering putting his two daughters in Hannah Baptist School, and he asked me the question, he said, hey, James, does, does Hannah Baptist, do they still emphasize, you know, you can't kiss your girlfriend, and, and do they still emphasize those, those things? And I said, yeah, yeah, we do, and we haven't changed at all on that. And he goes, and he, he's not, I'll just say, I'll just go off the story. He said, you know, I, I've often wondered, does that make Christian young people, does that make them want to maybe do that more? Because we say, you can't do this, and so does that make them want to do it? And I remember looking at my very good friend, a peer of mine, and saying what I, what I believe wholeheartedly, and that is, you know what, I don't know if it makes them want to do it more. But that's what the Word of God says. Yeah. You know, but that's what the Bible says. And there's many of you that you just want to know what the Bible says, and you want to see what the Word of God says, not some other man's opinion. For this is the will of God, that ye, even your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication. Your purity matters. Yeah, it does matter. And I love, I love the, the next verses, mm -hmm. that every one of you <laughs> should know how to possess the vessel of sanctification and honor. Yeah. Not in lust. It says not in the lust of concupiscence, but not in lust even as the Gentiles which know not God. There's a way that the lost world, the, 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 the lost world acts in regards to fornication. And we are clearly told that is not for a child of God. Amen. <laughs> that every one of you should know, should know how to possess this vessel. So, so we possess it with truth. One truth is that this issue, this core at the core of everything, this purity issue, it matters to God. Another truth would be, you know, what is marriage? I mean, marriage is defined for us in the Bible. And I think, especially in this day and age, having a, a clear definition of what marriage is, you go all the way back to Genesis, go to the first marriage. It's called, uh, it's called original intent. It's called the law of first mention in the Bible. If you want to really know what God feels about something, you go to the first time he brings it up. The law of first mention, it's a great way to study the Bible. Okay, so the law first mentioned when it comes to, to marriage, you see Adam, you see Eve, you see one man, one woman for a lifetime. You see the leave and cleave principle, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. So, so one of the truths that will protect us is that, yes, purity matters, and secondly, marriage. Marriage is one man, one woman for one lifetime. The Bible even says that other places. Yeah, it says, I, I think it's four times that the Bible says it, and we and we talked about it briefly a little while ago, and maybe may, maybe it says it more, but uh, there in Genesis, two places in the Gospels, I think in the book of Ephesians, the, the Bible clearly states that. And the fact of the matter is, our society wants to paint that position as, as somehow, um, you know, that's, you're hating on other people if you say that, that a homosexual is wrong. You know what? It, we're not any more than than the men in this room would expect me to be faithful to my wife, and I'm not to be an adulterer. Why? Because well, that's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I and and a man is not supposed to be a homosexual. That that is according to Scripture, um, and it and it says it multiple places. Yeah, and the first time God puts people together, it's a man, it's a woman, it's for a lifetime. I mean, you see that. That's a truth that protects us. You know, um, another truth that protects us is, is what the Bible says about, you know, the physical relationship. And the Bible says that, that the physical relationship happens after marriage. Marriage is honorable. It's honorable, the bed undefiled. There's an order there. And, and when we take liberties 
you know, when we don't recognize that order, okay, then, then we're losing our protection. We're vulnerable. We are vulnerable to an attack from Satan. He'll attack your purity and, and he'll make your whole body weak, okay? And again, no matter how much Bible you know, it doesn't matter how many tracts you've given out, it doesn't matter. Once that part of you is defiled, it's, it's major, okay? And so we need to protect our purity with truth, all right? We, we protect it with the truth that this is an important issue, this matters to God. We protect it with the truth that here's what marriage is. It's one man, it's one woman, it's for a lifetime. We, we protect it with the fact that the physical relationship is to occur after marriage. That's when it's it's to occur, not not before you're married, not when you're almost married, right. not you know. But I really love them, and I think we're going to get married. No, no. The truth of the word of God is after marriage that takes place, and so maybe tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about lies that are told. But young people, this this is a very very important issue. First piece of armor. First thing, but let's get first things first. Protect your purity. It gives power in everything else. A, a preacher that's not pure, you know, let, let's think about it. It really doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter how much Bible he knows, how good. It just doesn't matter. Um, then his purity. He's lost a lot of influence. Same with a Christian teenager. Same with an, an adult. This issue is very important to God. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. God bless you. Have a good day.